Hey guys, I am back. Sorry for my hair being wrapped today. Today is Sunday and um, it's shampoo day. So my hair is wet and it's conditioned. So I decided since I was asked to film a video about a particular subject, I decided to just pin my hair up until I'm done and shoot this video. So I'm going to get right to it so it's not a long drawn out video. First, I want to say that we are two weeks into my third semester of the program. And when I first started, like the first week and a half, I made videos every day, like little short, maybe five minute videos that I was, I was going to put together and condense to make a video like a day in the life showing you me going to class and what I do, my morning routine and me at clinic. <clears throat> but that didn't work out how I wanted it to. So, I decided to just cancel that, but I came to you today because I was asked in a comment section to, I'm looking at my iPad so I can make sure I answer the correct question. The question was, if I could make a video about whether it's easy or not to find a job after graduating. Okay, so let me say this. I've said this in previous videos, but I just want to reiterate another time. When you go and you start to try to find sonography programs, you want to make sure, for one, you go to a reputable school. Most importantly, two, you go to a school that's accredited. And I will li link the um, website again below as far as the website you can go to to make sure the school that you go to is accredited. Um, yes and no as far as if it's hard for you to find a job or get a job when you graduate. I imagine that if you go to a school that's not accredited, it's hard. Um, or a school that just started offering a sonography program and they're going through the accreditation process, but they won't be accredited by the time you graduate. Yes, it's gonna be harder for those schools. For one, when you graduate, you're not going to be able to particularly sit for the boards immediately. It's a process as to you becoming a registered diagnostic medical sonography or um, registered echo tech or whatever specialty you choose. Um, so I think if I remember the process correctly, when you go to a school that's not accredited, you have to wait like a year. It's the whole process take like a year and a year and a half before you can sit for your state boards. Um, you have to pay a lot of money. It just takes a lot more time. In that case, yes, it will be harder for you to find jobs because hospitals and clinics and wherever you apply to, they want someone that's registered. They want someone that went through an accredited program. Most of the time when you look on Indeed or Glassdoor or whatever you're looking on, if you're looking at the hospital website directly, in the descriptions, it will tell you that it wants a RDMS or, sorry, that's my dog, or registered echo tech if you're doing echo or vascular or whatever. But it'll also say that it wants someone that went to an, went through an accredited ultrasound or sonography program. It doesn't necessarily say it's ever it barely ever says or states you have to have your bachelor's, a master's, an associate's, a certificate. It barely get into that because at the end of the day, if you go through an ultrasound program and you go through an accredited one, you will be able to sit for your boards to become a registered sonographer. And that's most important. If you're not registered, then a lot of times you won't be able to find a job. Now, you do have some jobs, a lot of jobs, that knows that they will be hiring new students. So they will give you up to a year or up to six months from your start date to get your registries done. With my program, we will take our visits, we will take our OB, we will take our OB visits, breast, and our general certifications boards before we graduate so <laughs> at the end of our program we will be able and register to do OB general breast if I'm not mistaken and definitely um, 
our physics portion. Physics is the first thing. You always have to take physics first before you can sit for the rest of the state boards. Um, but yeah, so that's on a non-accredited school. If you go to a school that's accredited, it is not hard. And this is why I'll say it. We still have two more semesters to go, but I am, I have talked to some of the ladies from the previous class. I have friends that are sonographers. And I went to school and I got my bachelor's degree at a college. It's Armstrong, formerly known as Armstrong State University. It's now called Georgia Southern Armstrong Campus because this fall they merged with Georgia Southern. It's in Savannah, Georgia. They're the only school in Georgia that offers a bachelor's in ultrasound. I have two friends that graduated from the program. Neither one of them stayed in Savannah, just because it was oversaturated. Now, you have to keep in mind a few things. A few things, if you go to a school that's oversaturated, will it be harder to get a job? Maybe so, but it's still not going to be impossible, and I'll explain why later. But both of my friends graduated from the program in Savannah. One of them came back to her hometown, which is Atlanta, and she now works at a hospital here. And she works at Maternal Fetal Medicine, one of the best well-known maternal fetal medicine hospitals in Atlanta. She works there. Nobody knew her. She didn't do any rotations in Atlanta, but she got hired, you know. My other friend, she went back home originally to Warner Robins to work, and now she's a travel sonographer. They didn't have any problems getting jobs. One of the girls that's in a rotation where I am at right now she graduated from a school in Statesboro Georgia she not works in Atlanta she never did any rotations in Atlanta I say all of this to say this at the end of the day you go to ultrasound school you go through these rotations when you go through these rotations you go to these hospitals for your clinic rotation they are you're, you're essentially going on many, and I've said this before in previous videos, you are essentially going through many job interviews at your clinic rotations. That's why it's best to be on time. That's why it's best to not be lazy, to give 110% when you go through your clinic rotations because they're watching. And nine times out of ten, if they like you and you've done a good job, they will hire you when you graduate so you will not have a problem getting a job when you graduate now i applied to the school in savannah and i didn't get in at the time that i applied i knew it was a 50 50 chance i wouldn't get in because i hadn't finished all of my prereqs but i decided to apply still and i got close with the sonography the sonographer the director of the sonography the sonography program. I don't know why I'm getting so tongue-tied about this word. The director of the sonography program. And I was talking to her and she said, you know, so many people graduate in Savannah and it's oversaturated. She said one or two things are going to happen. You're going to get a job, but it may not pay you as much. Because you, just think about it. When you're in a state, a city, an area... And it's oversaturated. Whether it be sonography, whether it be nursing, it doesn't respiratory therapy, it doesn't matter. It's oversaturated and it's it's graduating. The city has so many graduates of a particular program and only a certain amount of hospitals, clinics, whatever it may be. They are going to offer very low pay in that area because they know if you don't take it, somebody else will. But you can't be afraid of that. Your main goal is to get the degree first. Your main goal is to get the degree first. Ultrasound is a very close-knit field. It's a close-knit career. Everybody knows everybody. Like, it's, it's very small. So don't burn your bridges. And your teachers and people at your clinic rotations will probably tell you that also. I know my teachers and all of the ladies at the clinic rotations tell me me that and everybody in my class that everybody knows everybody no matter where they are no matter what area somebody knows somebody that knows somebody you know and you don't want to burn your bridges because that can lessen your chances from getting a job you also want to make sure that you network it's a few girls in my class that don't 
plan to stay in Atlanta when they're done. So right now, they're starting to network, to reach out to people. You know, sonography, the, the field itself is growing. And it's a lot of money in the field. Um, they have new machines. They're starting to use ultrasound for different body parts and organs that they didn't. Muscular skeleton, muscular skeletal is one of the main ones, one of the biggest ones right now. Um, the newest ones, the newest and biggest one right now um, that's going off. And you can't, I was you guys before I started this program. I went on Google and I looked at reviews as far as trying to find the pay, the best areas that's paying, if the field is worth any money. And for one, I would say a lot of it is accurate. A lot of it is out of date. And it's not enough newer graduates keeping this information up to date. A lot of people aren't spending time going on Google and making blogs or vlogs or any posts or anything like that to keep us up to date. And you have to realize that as time change. I mean, it could just be a few months. As time changes, so does everything else. I have a friend that goes to school in Rome. She's in an ultrasound program. She's doing Echo. She graduates in December. She has already started a PRN job making $30 an hour. Okay? She works two days a week making $30 an hour. And she makes full-time money just off those two days a week. Just because of the amount of money that she makes. So from from the feedback that I have been given from people that I have talked to, I know people who have graduated making at the very least $25 to $27 an hour and up. So, I mean, it's up to you. And you have to keep in mind, it, it all depends on if you PR in, you're going to make more money. Because you don't have benefits, more money there. Um, if you're state to state, city to city, it just all depends. So don't think that sonography isn't the field where you can't get a job because you can. People are having babies. People are going through kidney disease, liver disease, they're getting transplants, cancer, gallstones are happening to a lot of people, thyroid issues are happening, blood clots are happening. All of these things are found via ultrasound. These are things that we can scan via ultrasound every single day. Um, it's anything in the health profession, you'll always have a job. But you can't be scared to relocate. If it if it means that you have to relocate to make more money, be open to it. I mean, but you don't always necessarily have to relocate. You need to start by joining ultrasound, um, diagnostic medical sonography, um, what are they called? Little communities, um, groups. They got groups on LinkedIn. They got groups on Facebook. They got groups on Google. They got groups from just DMS, like the Society of Diagnostic Medical Sonography is one. Um, and once you get into the program, they'll talk about that. Just network. Network. Get involved. Do well in clinical. Give 110% be involved in clinical do great don't be lazy don't talk on your phone you know be helpful show them that this is what you really want to do show them that you're interested when you go into these clinic sites and you will get a job you will get a job trust me that don't 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 be worried about that it's money in this field trust me I know people making a hundred thousand dollars now I don't know anyone making a hundred thousand dollars fresh out of school but I know people who are like five years in the game and you think five six years in the game you probably think five or six years that's a long time no it's not it's a lot of sonographers that are at our clinic rotations that have been scanning for five to seven years and they're like it just seems like yesterday sometimes that I just graduated I still feel new you know so don't get deterred don't worry about what you see on Google, you know, and I'm a living testimony. I'm I'm doing it. I'm here. I'm in the flesh. I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it real time. It's not like I don't know what I'm talking about. If it was no money in this field or no money where I'm putting in all this work to get this degree, my second degree, 
and I'm doing it off lack of sleep. I'm working a full-time job. This program is a full-time job. If I didn't see a good reward at the end of my tunnel, I wouldn't do it. But I will tell you this, like I tell people with any healthcare professional career, don't do it for the money. You want to make sure that you're going to enjoy it. I see work in the hospital. I see a lot of nurses that, you know, they don't, they're there for the money, not there for all the right reasons. And that's, it's some of those people in every field, not just nursing, it's some of those in, in the criminal justice field, in the healthcare field, in the social work field, and the art design field. It's just, do it because you like it, because you enjoy it. Not because the money, but it is good money to be made. You can live comfortably off of a sonographer's salary. I also encourage anyone that's interested into a sonography program, please go job shadow. Go to your local hospital, a clinic, OB clinic, um, what else, a dialysis center maybe, um, if they got a cancer center, anything like that, just reach out to the director of the radiology program. That's what I did back at home. I reached out to them. I asked them if I could job shadow for, I think I did it for three or four days. I job shadowed, and um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, and like I told you guys before, I initially wanted to only be a needle natal nurse. But once I got to job shadow and see firsthand with my own two eyes for for about four hours each day, four to five hours I stayed, what sonographers do, I enjoyed that even more. Like, it it felt like I, this is the place that I was supposed to be. So, go job shadow. Go do it. Ask them questions. Ask them what are, they, what are their day-to-day -day, um, activities. What do they like? What do they dislike? What's the hardest part of their job? I asked those same questions, and I asked the girl, what was the hardest part of your job? And she said the hardest part of her job was when she scans OB patients, and she tells them that they're having a girl, and they wanted a boy, or vice versa, they would get so upset with her. She said that's the hardest part of her job. So think about it. I hope this answers anybody's question. If you got any more questions, just leave them in the comment box down below and I'll do a video. You guys take care.